Hey everybody, it's Tiger again, and today we're going to go over the May update patch notes. Now, in all honesty, I was kind of excited when I heard what was coming this update, but after doing a little bit of research into the actual campaign ship and what's actually going to be coming up and what's not included as well, I, I'm going to be honest, I'm like, I'm 50-50 on this update. I'm excited for some things, but I'm really wanting some others. So without any further ado, let's get right into it. Here are the, exp uh, the update times. It's on May 16th, which is this coming Monday. So make sure to play Flander while you still can. Well, make sure to get Flander while you still can. And then the update size is not really anything too important there. We're going to skip over the TLDR because we're going to read everything. My, there's no point in repeating everything. We're just going to read over it. We'll, we'll come back to it at the end, though. So, Pan-European Destroyers and Early Access and Sweet Comebacks. A whole new branch of Pan-European Destroyers are arriving in Legends, now available in Early Access, of course. It, has, it consists of six new destroyers. I'm not going to count the cruiser because that's the tier one, that's the grief. And obviously Romulus is going to be the only one uh, available for research immediately. Within Class Horn, Visby, Vastaras, Skune, and Osteryotland, with Osteryotland being available next update. But these DDs don't need smoke generators, relying instead on speed and powerful armaments, as well as a repair party consumable at higher tiers. And I believe the tier 3 gets a repair party. I believe everything from tier 3. I know for sure the tier 4 does, but I'm not sure about the tier 3. But we'll wait and see what happens when the line's released. Let's get the new ships. Acquire some pan euro DD crates, including the big ones, which are subject to the guarantee system. So you have an early access ship. Of any tier and at least every 20th crate and threshold for Friesland in the same crate is 30 containers and that's in the big crates that's not the crappy regular ones. Friesland is also coming back like I just said and she's available in the big crates or she can be obtainable for, to glo for global XP which is kind of a middle finger to all of us who you know got the low yang or the Friesland who got both Liliang and Friesland in the campaign? We could have just waited one update, and then we would have got it. We would have gotten Lo Yang for DXP, and then waited a couple more, and we would have got a Friesland. But it's okay. I'm I'm glad to see Friesland coming back. It'll give people some, you know, a lot more people to get access to her. And also, Bliskawitia is coming back. She's a tier six premium Polish destroyer. She's okay. She's not really anything to write home about, but it's good to see her coming back. One more pan-European destroyers. Get a, get is the all-new premium Uland of tier six, starting the twenty-third. She's going to be basically, I believe she's similar to the. So in in the actual tech tree, Uland is the ship between Skune and Ostergillen, if I remember correctly. So fast torps repair party. I think she only has four guns, but decent reload. So that might be something to check out. More good news, two new commanders, Comrade Helfrich, who was stealthily added to the offshore ranks in the last update, was available when, uh, I forget which destroyer it was, I don't know, but I know that he came out, and I, I grabbed him as soon as he came out, he's a really good main build on Friesland, and Stig Hansen Eriksson are joining Jersey's horse to be hiding inside commander crates. Each of three pan Euro commanders are, is also obtainable for 900,000 commander XP in the store. Now this is actually a big silent change right here. Because now, all of the pan Euro commanders are finally coming to the store for Commander XP. This wasn't a thing before. You could only get Swirsky through the, um, well, when uh, Bliskawicka was in the store, when uh, Orkin was in the store. So this is good to see that Wargaming finally is putting them in the store. So Conrad is going to be the default commander. He's the universal. Really... He's, he's good for meme builds, like you can put Fire Chance on Friesland, you can Turch first off with the Turch first, or Concealment, it's up to you. And then, obviously you could do a meme build, but Wilter can put on Triple Friesland, so like have Fully Packed to get an extra smoke screen, extra Hydro, and extra Speed Boost. So he's a really good Universal Commander, I think he'll play well with these DDs, giving them an extra heal. Because the Pan Euro DDs aren't really known for being too stealthy. They're they're good gunboats and they're good at taking fights to other destroyers, but they're not known for their concealment. And then we have Stig Erickson, who seems to be more along the lines of a torpedo boat commander. He has mostly torpedo boat inspirations. Um, 
I wonder what this skill is. I know, I think that's the one that, um, that skill is the one that, uh, Mordoff has. I could be wrong, but it's like it decreases the chance of having your, um, primary armament, uh, like your main guns or your torpedo tubes destroyed or knocked out, reduces the chances. And his, his base trait seems to be engine boost cooldown, which for the pan your ODDs is actually a good thing because, like I said, they they rely on their speed less than their concealment. Torpedo damage, not really anything too insane, but it it will help the pan your ODDs because their their torps are fast, but they don't have high damage. So I mean, buffing it a little bit is going to help. Some say his torpedoes defy physics. Others claim he never set a smoke screen in his life. That's all we know. Is he's named the Stig Hansen Erickson, and to learn everything about the new ship's commanders, they'll cover the matter next week in a featured article. Now, the Back to Belfast campaign. Belfast 43 is the tier 7 version of a cruiser you know and love, with AP and HE shells and close to American ballistics, but now she's equipped with two triple tube torpedo launchers. She also has an enviable consumables, a smoke generator, radar, and sonar available at the same time. To learn more about the ship, stay tuned to the issue, yada yada yada. So, personally, I'm 50-50 on the ship. I've done a little bit of research, and I'll make a separate video with going over the first impressions of the Belfast. I'll make that in a separate video. But I'll, I'll tell you this much. She doesn't have a great reload. I think it's nine and a half seconds stock. She is stealthy, but it, it's basically, like, I don't really know how to describe I'll, I'll I'll go over it in a separate video. It's just, I don't want to go over it here, because I... There's a whole lot of research that I would like to go over, so we'll cover that. We'll cover Belfast 43 in a separate video. Framework of the campaign is probably familiar to you. 100 milestones in five weeks. You can get Admiralty back. You can get premium stuff and ship, of course. And obviously, they'll bring out the challenge. They'll describe the challenges in the coming weeks. Here are the rewards you get with without the Admiralty backing. It's, it's, it's decent. A couple of crates, a couple of days of premium, some credits, and... Commander XP, got the global as well. So you get that much, you get 17,500 doubloons worth of stuff without Admiralty backing. And if you buy it for 2,500 doubloons, which is just about 10 bucks, you get everything before and then all the good stuff as well, including Belfast as well. And that's a total of 71,530 doubloons. So as it contains 100 milestones, if you wish to get everything right away, it'll require 27,250 doubloons, which is just shy of $100. Not really surprised there, it's just the default campaign. And the full breakdown of campaign, mission, campaign missions will be available on Monday the 16th. Okay, Agilene and Godzilla vs. Kong are back. This is one I think more people are excited for the Agilene comeback and not so much Godzilla and Kong. So the Agilene Plasma event, as well as Godzilla and Kong, will become available once both competitions are coming back in full, except for Agile and Otago. So that, that's good to see, because now I can finally pick up the ones I didn't buy before. Because now, like, I already put research into looking at all of these captains, and the only one I really wanted was Gazi for Akazuki. But I, now I might actually buy Latoria to see what accuracy builds can do. Yeah, seeing everybody come back, that's good in case you missed uh, the first or the second collab, so you missed commanders such as Sharnhorst, Baltimore, Nelson, like the really strong Agilene commanders that everybody really wants. So that'll be good to see them come back. Godzilla v. Kong are also available. They're going to be available until June 6th. You'll be able to get your hands on the Agilene goods starting from May 30th through June 20th. So Godzilla versus Kong will be back first, and then Agilene will come back later this month. And now enter the auction. The initial version of the new feature is here. It works this way. Make a bid for a lot with a finite number of valuable items within, each available. Either win and get the goods or get your bid refunded in two weeks. For now, the bids might be placed with balloons and credits, depending on the exact lot. This update the auction will be active from June 2nd to June 6th. So we're going to have to wait two weeks, technically three, before the auction will become available to us. And from what I saw in the campaign video, there are, in reality, three things that we're looking for. So there's insignias right here. And those, in, in the campaign video, they showed that it was 25 million credits was the default bid. I'm not sure how many of these you get. I think it might be just one. 
I, I could be wrong though. We'll just have to wait and see. And we have, I think that's the gold flag. I could be wrong, but I mean that's the one that was available for gold and wheat for a thousand doubloons. I don't know if you, I don't know if you really want that. And then we have tier three battleship, the SMS Koenig Albert, which is basically a Kaiser that has, like the Kaiser as she was built in the early 1900s. This is before Kaiser's modernization, because she has the um, two wing turrets in the middle, two aft, and one in front. So, and that was available, the minimum bid is 3,750 doubloons, as seen in the campaign video. So that might be an interesting one. If it gets, um, what is that? The if she gets plotting room like um, what are, do Turen and Bellerophon does, that might be pretty interesting. But if not, she's going to be pretty tanky because she's a German battle cruiser. Please help us test it as we are eagerly awaiting this feedback. You should check the log. Yada 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 yada. All right, three arena seasons. Arena makes a thunderous return for the update, with three seasons available over its course. The arms race bonuses come back too, except the one that restores HP just like you asked. Which is a good thing and a bad thing, because allowing ships to have more XP actually gave you more HP, allows you to earn more XP, because you're doing more damage over time. So if you wanted to farm XP, you could farm a ship all the way down, let it heal back up, and do it again. And therefore, in essence, you're doing the damage of two ships. But I think that's a good thing, because now everybody, like, if you misplay, you're going to get finished off, and you won't be able to skimper away and recover some health. Other than that, no changes, and no carriers. Buckle up and show who's boss. All right, so the arena seasons. The first one, which is season 11, is going to be the tier 4 season, and that's going to be available from May 19th to May 23rd. And the primary reward course is steel, but then you can also get some pan-European crates, some premium days, commander items, etc, etc. But you get 1.6k steel for making top 1% in that arena season. Then season 12, which is the tier 5 season, is from June 2nd to June 6th. Once again, 1.6k steel, commander items, premium days, yada yada yada. And then arena season 13 is the tier 6 season, which is from June 16th to June 20th, and it's also going to have 1.6k steel. But it's going to be a 3v3 season, so you're going to really want to be running more brawler type ships or ships that can have close quarters. And also, you want to be going for those buffs as much as you can. Yeah, that's Arena. So now, new ships of the update. We have the Tier 4 Japanese Premium Battleship Miyogi. Miyogi is based on Project 240, which was a precursor to the active design of the Congo class. She has six powerful 14 inch guns, with two of the turrets placed in the rear, which are right here which make Miyogi a tough fight for all comers. She's also pretty quick and sports respectable AA and secondary outfits. So basically, we're getting a Congo with one less turret at the same tier. Not really looking too forward to this. Like, the 14-inch guns are nice because most ships at tier 4, like the highest caliber is 14-inch, and Congo has them, the New Yorks and the Nevadas have them, and the... Uh, Russian one has them, but everybody else has below. But only having six of them, it's the least amount of barrels of the tier, and having two at the rear is not really a great either, because you're gonna have to really angle out a lot to get get your prime your primary firepower your ship to bear, like the maximum amount of it. But if you hold a cutting out position, she's gonna be really strong as well. Plus, having speed in quote unquote respectable AA, we know how AA in this game works. Especially if you get up tiered against tier fives. But we'll just have to wait and see what she's like. Then obviously Olan, you said it, she's gonna be tier six. She's gonna have four guns. She's basically, I believe, going to be like a baby Friesland. That's gonna have a longer reload, but she does have access to torpedoes. I believe she has a 2x3. I could be wrong though. So quick shot with strong AA defenses, bolstered by defensive AA, and she also has a heal. So this Pandir DD is no slouch. Add to that repair party and powerful torpedoes and you're a top contender, but beware, there's no smoke generator. But that should be a pretty spicy ship. And that might be an interesting one to take out for the tier six arena season. Balance changes. Alright, so this these balance changes are the one I covered in a previous video. The one where they're bringing SAP to Italian premium cruisers for testing. They're moving Weimar up to tier seven. They're 
buffing Azuma, uh, a couple of others. I'll, I'll link that video in the description if you want to go take a more in-depth look at that. So, there's no, any, there's nothing to cover here. However, there's a sufficiently big surprise that is lying in wait for us. So let's stay tuned. So hopefully that's announced to us soon. That'd be a good thing to hear. Store update, just uh, they're um, adding skins and permanent, permanent camouflage which will have to be uh, previewed so that way you don't have to buy them to see what they look like on your ship or commander. So that's, that's a nice change. Not really something that's huge though. Bug fixes, not really anything too important. Not anything for mobile. If you guys want to take a look at it, here you go. But yeah, no, nothing really, anything insane. Other, just a couple of just default fixes. However, there is one in here that actually makes me very happy. They're finally adding the sonar icon. When opposing ships using sonar combined to heal or island, you'll see a corresponding icon. So now you can tell when a ship is hydroing you and when a ship is radar, which is actually really really huge. And if you have game sense to understand that radar lasts at most 30 seconds, 40 if you're at legendary tier. But if you, if you know how long Hydro lasts, you already could assume. But now having that as like a little quality of life thing that helps. And they're also adding demo battles, which are just like you take a ship into AI for like the first two times you get it so you can try the ship out and understand what's happening. And a couple of UI changes. Yeah, other than that, that's it. So TLDR uh, Pan Euro DD is coming in early access with two new commanders. Back Belfast cam campaign is coming with Belfast 43. Uh, Azraelane and Godzilla vs. Kong, Kong are coming back for a limited time. The auction is coming out later this update. Three in the seasons, and of course, nothing else went over. So, I thank you all for watching. Make sure to check the link in the description for the balance changes video, and I will see you in the next one. Peace.